Hey guys, I'm Dev, and I've never hosted a how to kill video, but I've been blown away by your response to our series. Do you need to know how to kill Michael Myers? No, but we're proud of the fact that we taught you how. We love making these movie trope survival guides, and today we're expanding them. Doc, uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Because that friendly old scientist who asks you to feed their dog might be a much bigger threat than a maniac in a mask. Now, unless you got about like six degrees from MIT, you're probably not gonna be the person who discovers time travel. I'm sorry. But there might just come a day when your dad's favorite comedian shows up with a magic phone booth and wants to drag you along for a ride. Catch you later, evil dude. So if you find yourself standing on the precipice of time and space, stop, take a moment, you've got a time machine so there's no rush, and ask yourself, what could possibly go wrong with time travel? In short, a lot. You've gotta be pretty damn sharp to shatter the space-time continuum, but all those overachievers who invent time machines can't seem to wrap their big brains around the dire consequences of their actions. It's normal, I don't know. I can't blame them entirely though, we're dealing with some pretty heady concepts. It travels forward normally towards the beginning, and when it gets there, the feed runs down parabolically until it's just stopped, but it doesn't. It curves back around towards the A-end. Including the most mind-boggling misfortune of all, the terrifying temporal paradox. If you change the past in a way that contradicts the future, like going back in time to kill your grandpa, it creates a paradox, basically an impossible situation. If granddad dies before he conceives your father, that means you will never be born. But if that's the case, how could you have gone back in time to whack him in the first place? Oh, this is heavy. Let's get this out of the way. The space-time continuum doesn't handle inconsistencies well at all. And if you're not careful, you might be erased from existence entirely. Prime example, Marty in Back to the Future. Excuse me. But even that's getting off a little easy. In part two, Doc warns of an even worse fate if the gang were to meet their future self. The encounter could create a time paradox, the results of which could cause a chain reaction that would unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe. Think about it, what if the older Jennifer thought her younger version was an intruder and shot her? Oh, please, Mrs. Strickland, I just want to know what the hell is going on. Or she simply bashed her own head on a rock when she fainted. If young Jen die, that means there will be no future Jennifer around to kill her, potentially causing a cosmic collapse. Oh, great Scott. It's scary stuff, and if you're dead set on assassinating your ancestors, your best hope is the multiverse theory. Sometimes creating an impossibility just splits the time stream into two universes. Our time is fractured. You two somehow created a feedback loop of uncertainty that split our reality into two equally possible impossibilities. The moment you kill your grandpa, it creates a parallel existence where you were never born. But what if your meddling was always part of the cosmic plan? When John Connor orders Kyle Reese back in time to protect slash bang his mom, that didn't erase some other father from the timeline. John's entire existence is a causal loop. This is deep. He's born, survives Judgment Day, and sends Kyrie's back to do the nasty and the pasty. Then the whole thing repeats itself. If you don't send Kyle, you can never be. God, a person could go crazy thinking about this. Just like how Philip J. Fry was always supposed to go to Roswell and become his own grandfather. Oh, a lesson in not changing history from Mr. I'm my own grandpa. Let's get the hell out of here already. Screw history. Or how Bruce Willis inadvertently creates the Rainmaker when he tries to kill him as a boy in Looper. You let this boy live, he's gonna take everything you've got. See what he becomes. I haven't seen that yet. In a causal loop, history accounts for everything, including your time travel. You can't change the past because you always will have already gone back there. Really the biggest victim of the causal loop is grammar. <laughs> so if you're in the right kind of universe, there's nothing to fear from a paradox. But that still doesn't mean time travel is a great idea. You have to watch out for the safeguards. When you mess with the time stream, you put a big old target on your back. I got something for your ass. No. Oh, oh, God. God. Don't someone no. mess with time. Ah. You don't no. with oh. time. Especially if you're up to no good. I will mess with time. In Primer, a couple of engineers manipulate the stock market using some extremely convoluted time travel. They make some serious bank, but after all the inevitable shenanigans, multiple copies of people are running around the same four day period. The universe can't handle the strain and the characters' brains start to degenerate as a response to their impossible existence. If that's too subtle, how about some spooky flying monsters? The Reapers from Doctor Who act as the timeline's white blood cells, devouring anything and anyone associated with the paradox. Kind of like Stephen King's Langoliers. And now giant CGI Pac-Man aren't scary enough, a lot of time traveling societies use human law enforcement to keep the time stream intact. 
Star Trek has some pretty strict rules about temporal meddling, not that anyone in Starfleet seems to give a shit. The temporal prime directive. The less I know about the future, the better. But you definitely don't want to break the laws of physics in the world of time cop. In the distant future of 2004, there are two uses for time travel. Going back to rob ancient treasures. Would you please give me the gold? and sending heavily armed kickboxing cops after the bandits. I know you think you're cute swiping the sports almanac from the future, but when your alternatives are a dystopian nightmare where your arch nemesis is married to your mom, no! or a kick in the face from Jean-Claude Van Damme, just reconsider. But if you're still insistent on changing the timeline, you stubborn bastard, you've gotta be aware of the butterfly effect. <laughs> This is gonna cost me. The concept originated in Ray Bradbury's story, A Sound of Thunder, where a time-traveling tourist messes up big time by accidentally stomping on a prehistoric butterfly, leading to a drastically different Earth millions of years later. It seems like an insignificant change, but that butterfly could have pollinated a plant that could have been eaten by a mammal that was lunch for a dinosaur that had an audition for Jurassic Park. What a dick. The slightest change to the past can result in a wildly unforeseen consequences. This is indeed a disturbing universe. One wrong move and the next thing you know we're living in a world where hamburgers eat people. Ironically, the movie named after the butterfly effect has an extremely weak understanding of the concept. The main character travels through his own life, making some pretty huge changes to the timeline, but the fallout really only affects him and his friends. You have to change everyone else's life again, is that it? Maybe next time you'll pop up in some mansion while I end up in Tijuana doing some donkey act. Every time I try to help someone, everything just goes to shit. Well, don't give up now, slick. If stumping on an insect results in global fascism, I think Ashton Kutcher strangling himself in the womb would have had bigger repercussions. The butterfly effect is why you shouldn't even dream about deposing a despot while you're flying through time. Hey, I get it. You want to kill Hitler. I want to kill Hitler. Hang on. I just want to make one stop. Betrachten Sie meinen Stürmer! Everyone wants to go back in time and kill Hitler before his rise to power, but even with your noble intentions, you just can't change something that huge and expect the same world when you return. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna wind up with an apocalypse on your hands. In 112263, James Franco successfully prevents Kennedy's assassination. Jack, Jack Kennedy here. The Secret Service tells me that uh, my wife and I owe you our lives. Thank you. But it turns out JFK's second term wouldn't have gone so well. I don't understand. I thought JFK would have made things better. If you ever tempted, just remember Abe Simpson's advice. Can you ever travel back in time? step on anything because even the tiniest change can alter the future in ways you can't imagine and if you're still gonna go through with it you rebellious bastard you can always make like homer and <laughs> keep messing around until you create a future that's close enough for comfort foolish earthling totally unprepared for the effects of time travel <laughs> scientists a lot smarter than homer have done some serious damage to history and by now you should be well aware of the risks but what's the best case scenario? Has anyone figured out the right way to time travel and how the hell did they do it? If you ask me, no one's ever done it better than two San Dimas stoners. I'm Bill S. Preston, Esquire. And I'm Ted Theodore Logan. Yeah! yeah. And we're Wild Stallions! During the course of their excellent adventure, Bill and Ted pretty much ignore every single rule of time travel. Excellent! They carelessly pluck historical figures out from their own times just to pass a homework assignment with zero regard for the temporal prime directive. They're not worried Beethoven is gonna to succumb to present day diseases he has no antibodies for. They just wanna rock and roll. Bill, my friend. Yes, Ted, my friend. This has been a most excellent adventure. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> You should also pay close attention to the clever ways Bill and Ted use causal loops to their advantage. The heroes of the story don't actually have to worry about anything as long as they remember to go back in time after the happy ending and leave all that stuff where they needed it. After the report, we'll time travel back to two days ago, steal your dad's keys and leave them here. Where? I don't know. How about behind that sign? 
That way, when we get here now, they'll be waiting for us. See? Whoa, yeah! Without any care for chronological consequences, Bill and Ted ace the report, find true love, and reshape society in their image. You see, eventually, your music will help put an end to war and poverty. It will align the planets and bring them into universal harmony, allowing meaningful contact with all forms of life. And it's excellent for dancing. Then they conquered death itself in the sequel. Maybe that's the real secret to time travel. Don't concern yourself with paradoxes, predestination, or that pesky problem of free will. Just have fun with it. Rules are meant to be broken after all, but in order to break them, you need to know them first. So stay tuned to Now This Nerd in the future, or in the past, for the next time we tackle that all important question, what could go wrong? Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm really excited about this new series and I wanna know what you think could go wrong next. That could be cloning, first contact, talking to animals. Let us know in the comments below what you wanna see and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thank you. Uh, whoop.